Hi, and welcome to today's SME Business Podcast. Your host, Mark, will be joining you to interview a founder of an SME business each week, highlighting lessons learned and revealing insights. Listen and learn each week on how to get and stay ahead. Hi there, listeners. Thank you for tuning in for the next episode of the SME Business Podcast. Today we're joined by David Sommerfleck from DMS Blue. DMS Blue is an enterprise digital marketing agency that helps small businesses with digital marketing. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Mark. How are you today? Yeah, good, 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 great. Yeah, you know, like uh, um, um, it's uh, it's a bit gray here, but uh, it's still good. You know, uh, um, enjoying uh, recording a new episode, so it was always good and. Uh, it's always enjoyable to speak other, to other people, other entrepreneurs, and, you know, and learn some something more. And, and I appreciate you having me on. Uh, this is a subject that I'm very passionate about, yeah. so I'm looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, exactly. And I got a lot of questions lined up, so yeah, I'm sure we'll you know we'll fill it all up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, first question: um, okay. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself and how you got into entrepreneurship? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, basically, um, I started, well, I, I, I went to college and studied English, and my goal was to be a writer. I studied Chaucer and Keats and Shelley and Shakespeare and uh, other writers, of course, and that, that was my goal. And about halfway through college, I worked internships and began to discover as a young college student, there really were not that many well-paying jobs for writers or copywriters in my area, you know, geographically. And this was in the mid nineties and the internet uh, as a marketing uh, tool was still very new. So I began studying programming and website development and design and internet marketing. And uh, upon graduation, I began working for several marketing agencies and advertising agencies in different capacities. And I learned very quickly that my background in English and in writing gave me some some advantage over more experienced uh, developers or programmers, but I could also look at the problems and the situations that business owners were facing in a different way. So um, that's basically how I got started in, in marketing. And as I got older and matured, of course, I gained more and more experience working for different companies, working as a, a independent contractor or freelancer in between these positions and, and having other positions as well. So, you know, after a while, you start to get a little bit confident, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, uh, uh, that's how you grow, you know, like, uh, initially, you know, you, you're purely um, driven by passion, if you will. Yeah, then, you know, then you, you learn and learn and learn. And then, you know, you start getting confident. And yeah. when I taught uh, journalism at the college level, I remember uh, my first time I was very nervous. And I went to a much more experienced professor. And I said, you know, listen, I'm a little bit nervous about um, teaching. Uh, I've never taught at the college level before. Surely they must know at least as much, if not more than I do. And I remember he took me aside and he said, David, this is not what you think. Uh, you know, let your experience, you know, give you a, a place of confidence that, you know, they are the student you've already graduated and you graduated with a specialty. So don't be at all intimidated, you know, when in doubt, be more organized and the better organized you are, the more prepared you will be for any potential uh, unexpected event. And then that carried over into business too. And I should add also, you know, during this time, I was um, a certified small business mentor for the US Small Business Administration. And I did that off and on for about 10 years. And I realized 
in that capacity, you know, you start to see trends in, in the habits of small business owners, nonprofit organizations, and entrepreneurs, and you can diagnose issues very quickly and really get your hands dirty, so to speak, with the mechanisms of business and and kind of get in there to help businesses retool and reboot very quickly if the will is there. So it's a, it's a topic, obviously, I'm very passionate about. Yeah, that, that that's obvious, you know, like it, it comes true already. Um, um, my, but no, it's not a video kind of thing, uh, but it's uh, it's already obvious for just from talking to you um, that you, that you really yeah care about it. I um, do, I do, I, I very sincerely do. Yeah. I've seen a lot of really good, kind people, uh, you know, lose their businesses, lose their homes, lose their cars. I've seen a lot of good people. Um, have businesses that you want you would want to succeed but there were factors in play where you simply couldn't help them no so no, it's no. a it's a subject i feel very strongly about absolutely yeah yeah and then unfortunately you with this whole current crisis as well um, um it, it's it's not really helping where you know a lot of um, small businesses are being left behind if you will um, yes because you know governments around the world uh, are not necessarily reaching out their hands which is sad um because i think um i don't know the number in, in the us but i think it's similar percentage um, i think it was like 95 mm -hmm. or 98 percent of of of, mm -hmm. of of the of the economy or something is 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 um, um small medium enterprise yes that that number is very statistically similar yes in in the united states and i would say according to the u.s small business administration in the u.s somewhere between 95 to 97 something like that yeah yeah some percentage yeah. therein of small business owners will fail statistically yes. within their first two to three years yes, if yeah, not yeah, sooner yeah, yeah. Yes. and i know that that number is greater for restaurants and other types of uh, businesses now with covid19 amongst the population and in the u.s it's running rampant uh, because there's just so much conspiracy misinformation going on yes. and people don't want to wear masks and they think it's a hoax or what have you and that attitude is encouraged Yes, by many people. So that that rate of failure for small businesses, I would hazard a guess that it's it's probably a good deal higher than that right now. So it's yes, yeah. it's it's a very dark time for business owners. So you've got to be very savvy. You really uh, need to be in a position where you're receptive to change. Yes. Yeah, so everything, you know, like everything changed and, um, you know, uh, if you're not moving along with, with what the current environment require, requires. And unfortunately, you know, not, 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 not every business model, if you will, necessarily lean, lends itself to, um, uh, you know, uh, still operating. Uh, for instance, like, you know, uh, especially in the UK, uh, the events industry uh, is, is notorious as in being hit where events can't um, be held or they mm -hmm. can be held with such low numbers that basically uh, the numbers don't work uh, which is really right. sad because you know um, th th I think the most famous recent example is that um, a lady that had a business that basically does embroidery for um, um, uh, movies but also uh, she did embroidery for dresses for um, Kate and um, Meghan Markle. Mm -hmm. um, she is she hey, she had to move back in with her mother. Mm. Um, and and she literally is going hungry. Yes. And, because, and it's, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That, because that, that that whole thing, that whole part is, is not happening. And, and yeah. it's very unfortunate. And the thing is, when you look at someone like that, for me personally, I, I don't want to say it's heartbreaking, but it's it's very saddening because it doesn't have to be that way. If you can work with that 
that that uh, business owner before they hit that that um, that area. Yes. Before it gets too bad, that tipping point, you know, if you can work with them before it gets that bad, yes. you can turn things around. And yeah. in, in many cases, the the issues you're dealing with could be organizational, could be could be financial, but it it could also be personality where they're resistant to change and they just simply are uh, they they push back against any uh, amelioration you can't help them because they don't want to i remember uh a long time ago this is just one example my god i know probably hundreds i'm a big animal lover and um i remember talking to a woman at a shelter because my wife and i were going to adopt uh, an animal and I was talking to her about her needs and we were talking about marketing and building the nonprofit organization and I said you know look I, I love animals it's it's very subject very near and dear to my heart I'd be happy to create you know a very beautiful uh, mobile responsive website for you. I could probably make you number one in Google locally for your type of animal shelter because there's very little competition for it here. Uh, and I, I could really do this and I could do it quickly. Uh, what I would ask you in return would be that you would let me do it and, and, and use what I could provide. And she said, oh no, I couldn't do that. I need to be in control. I would want everything to look the way I want it to look. And and I just said, all right, well, God bless you. Let's just do what we came here to do. Yeah, that's that's sad. Uh, but, you know, like, yeah, you have to, like, change, you know, like, um, things that it's... I was doing last year, you know, like, I can't do right now. So, you know, I'm also changing business around. Um, yeah. And that, that's just, you know. Um, Responsive. Back- yeah, no, it's a, it's a fact of life. Uh, but yeah. yeah, in this case, uh, I, I do feel for the lady because, um, you know, the average person on the street is not going to order um, custom embroidery for a dress, if you get my point. Um, so no, basically, but that's... Her, her, market, her market was basically um, uh, movie studios. Yes. Um, um, yeah, high-end weddings. And then ha- weddings have been restricted. So yes. people go like, I'm not going to spend... Um, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, 60K on the dress anymore. Right. Because they can't even do a big wedding. So they go like, well, actually, we'll postpone this wedding. That same person, I would say, yeah. what can we do to pivot very quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. While yeah, you it's, still it's, have it's, revenue, I would yes, say yes. get on Eventbrite, get on meetup.com, get on yes. Facebook, and immediately start conducting uh, sewing workshops, sewing yes, classes, yes. start having virtual fashion shows. Yes. You know, perhaps you could design elaborate uh, robes for uh, professional wrestlers on TV or what have you. Yes. Or come up with a line of suits, work with other designers, make a list of all the different things that you could conceivably do yes. and begin them now yes. before it's too late. And no, now it sounds not. like, unfortunately, it may be too late. Yeah, yeah, and that, that that's the thing. Uh, uh, it does also partially comes from where initially the UK government said that the, they were not going to leave anyone behind and they mm. were not going to put any limits. And then they, like they kind of like back down basically, um, which is uh, where the situation is where it is. Um, but yeah, it is it, it, what it is. Um, to be fair, um, and also we you know people have to remember you know like. Um, it's 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 not personal that kind of thing. It's just a um, you know um, the, the, the sign of if you will the the, the, the you know the period that we're in. Um, you know yeah. that, that, that's perfectly you know viable businesses that that's before um, we're we, doing I don't know uh, two hundred three hundred k in three yeah. months and a- then a- you know, and tr- if the, yeah and then literally if the government shuts down the sector then yeah. Yeah, entropy is a natural law yeah. of nature that if we don't, if some force does not step in on a regular recurring basis to tweak something, then nature's law, entropy, is that the status we're accustomed to will disintegrate. Yes. 
And right now, we're in a state of entropy due to the pandemic, but also the resulting financial consequences of that. So it's really incumbent upon the business owners and entrepreneurs and nonprofit organizations and startup founders out there today to not only innovate, but really think, look, how can I pivot? I hate to use that term so often, but how can I change position so that we can accommodate what's going on in the world today? There is no business today that should not be online that should not be concerned with how they rank in Google, that is not using, uh, you know, video conferencing, that doesn't use e-commerce. It's utterly ridiculous not to use e-commerce today. Yes. And it doesn't matter what you do. If you have a business of any kind, you need money to survive. You have to pay bills. So why every website doesn't have e-commerce is beyond me. I don't, I don't understand it. Yes. If you're a dentist, doctor, lawyer, a, a, a accountant, a plumber, electrician, a bookkeeper, whatever it is that you do, you need money to pay your bills. So you should be taking payments through your company website, offering downloads, doing everything you can to go from meeting people face to face to interacting online yes. from networking uh, physically face to face to doing it online. The mediums are there. They've been there actually for decades now. Yeah. We could we could have done video consulting with clients decades ago. Yes. People and only wouldn't like do it. it. No, I know. And this is the funny part as well, you know, for it's like the zooms of the world where yeah. it really took off and people are like you know, literally Googling what was Zoom. Yeah. I think that t- was like one of the initial search terms that like blew up on Google. Yeah. And then you go like as, as a semi-technical person, you go like, well, how did person people not know? Um, Lack that, of interest. The, yeah. And, all, and also, many, yeah, we uh, resisted to change. And, and also uh, what, what's funny with the Zoom was that it's so wasteful. Um, the security uh, issues. Uh, so basically mm-hmm. they grew because they had like a, 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 a link where basically there was no password. Mm hmm. So that's basically, literally, that's how they advertise. So I still remember those billboards. Yeah. And then, of course, what happened is people started, uh, you know, like uh, it's a technical term, uh, Zoom bombing. Yes. So people were joining uh, uh, Zoom conferences. Yes. And then uh, because there was no password on it, uh, you know, some weird things happened where, you know, uh, with some, uh, let's say, adult teams. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that was so funny because uh, you go like, well, yeah, that's why the other people were asking for passwords. But yeah. It's, yes. Uh, and you have to find solutions to these issues, not be stymied yes. by yes. them and, and knocked back. There are so many competitors to Zoom now. You have Google Meet, Facebook yeah. has their thing. There's a company in Norway called Whereby. Yeah. Uh, there's Jitsi, there's Blue Jean. there's so many more now. Yeah. There's Skype and WebEx and on and on. So if you're someone like me, I, I favor privacy. Yes. So um, I, do you, you know, I have secure video calls with my clients. I tell them what procedure to go through. Yes. Um, and I tell them, if you refuse to follow these procedures, I'm not going to be there because I value privacy. You must enter the password given. You must go to the link I give you and, yes. and follow everything. But it's really unfortunate. I mean, when I look for networking events, just the other day, I was looking at chambers of commerce and looking for networking events. And none of the my area chambers were having events online. Yeah, it was so, so, so weird. They're still having face to face meetings. I know, I know. And I it's remember, like, I, and, and, and it's not just, you know, it's US, a profound I disconnect. It, I see it here as well. And I was going to, um, uh, initially, I was a Chamber of Commerce member as well with my, my business. It's a terrible and, waste of money right now. And I was like going there and like, which is like, it's so sad because these people, for instance, like had great products and services. And, and I was just sitting there as well and going like, if you would only go online. But they have no interest in doing it. So you can't help them. No, no, They're... no. And, and you go there like you're, you're, you're like 
I don't know, happy with like, uh, let's say six figure, low six figure revenue. And I'm like, but what you offer is so unique that actually, if you go online, you can take the two seven figures. Yeah. Uh, they but, they yeah, can't uh, it's yeah. they can't see that that's that's yes. the, that's one of the key stumbling blocks yes that many people have is that they cannot see it themselves whether it's visualization yeah. they they don't see it so right. because they don't see it it's not a problem or they don't think it's a problem so things go on i yes. remember once going to um my wife got me into a lot of health food and so we went to a health food store and i remember looking at the health food store website obviously because i'm like that and i remember saying to her it's like it's such a shame they don't they don't take orders online they have events there at their quaint uh, uh shop but they don't promote them online so you have no way of knowing about them in advance you can't purchase tickets to the events. They don't stream it online, so you can't possibly watch it at home. And I, I went home and I emailed the woman who owned it. And I said, you know, listen, my wife and I went to your uh, health food store. We enjoyed the experience. We liked it very much. Are you at all interested in being online? You know, I could help you get to number one in Google again, because there's no competition locally. Yes. You could take orders online. You could have have it set up for delivery or curbside pickup. Are you at all interested? And she wrote me back a nasty email and just said, look, I'm already stressed out with so much work. Our sales are dropping. We don't know what to do. I've got 10 employees who I can't pay. I, I, I just don't know if we're going to be able to handle this. And I said, all right, have a nice day. I, what can I do with that? Yeah, no, it's funny you bring this up. Uh, I had a bit like a local fish and chip shop, uh, so British, um, British things. Hashtag oh, so I British. love fish and chips. I uh, haven't anyway, had that in so, so long. The, yeah, There's nobody who delivers. Yeah, so this is the fun part as well. So, um, yeah, in general, you know, Uber and, and Deliveroo and, and the Just Eats of the world, whatever. We all <laughs> have them. And um, basically, there was this fish and chip shop locally that was really good and like full. And then yeah. um, it was like, you know, uh, you hit a plateau, that kind of thing, because you can only serve so many people yeah. for takeaway and, and, and sit down. And so yeah. I was like, you know, like, like go to delivery guys or something. And yes, yeah. you have to pay them a cut. But then, like, you can scale up, which also, for instance, means that even if you don't want to do more revenue, it means that mm -hmm. you can close earlier. Yeah, you can make your revenue in in a shorter time, or yes. you can be like, hey, you know what? Instead of uh, six days a week, we only open five days a week because, the, yeah, we make more revenue in the days that that we're still open. That kind of thing. Yes. And then, and then the funny part is, or the sad part, depending on how you don't see it, they were like, oh no, we we don't see the point. Why would we do that? Yeah. And then, and then of course, like, go with it. And then now they started delivering with delivery rule. Um, and you just go like, you know, like I, if you listen to me before and I get it, you know, like I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't know everything, but I, if, if everybody else in the restaurants in the same street is doing it, then yeah, you probably should do that as well. Just when to it, not miss out on orders, that kind of thing. When it comes to running a business, it's really paramount that business owners and entrepreneurs understand the wolf is always at the door yes. you can even if you're an independent contractor or a freelancer or um, whatever you call yourself if you're a single person entity a business one bad client whether they're intentionally bad or not can sink a business or cause all kinds of drama and and, and issues as a, a digital marketing professional you know, if I have one, well, I, I certainly wouldn't uh, permit it now, but maybe 20 years ago, it, it's possible. But if I had one client who uh, had scope creep, which is what we call it when a project continues indefinitely or goes on much, much longer than it needs to, that that goes it, that takes away from your ability to earn a, sub, a livable wage. Yes. So, in other words, a project that should have taken 30 days 
uh, now takes 90 days. Well, whatever your profit margin was is now gone. Yes. If you work with one client who takes too long. So you have to have all of these things into consideration and work from a very deliberate, very organized perspective so that you can anticipate uh, changes in the weather, so to speak. Yes. What it, What if there is another pandemic five years from now? Bill Gates has already said that he anticipates that that could happen. Yes. Why would you not plan for that in advance? Yes. You know, Walmart, a global leader, they didn't have home delivery yes. until just recently, at least not where, where, where we live. Whole Foods, there's a Whole Foods where we live. Um, it's about a half hour drive from us. They would not deliver to your home until just a, a few weeks ago, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I remember thinking, good Lord, I can only imagine how many thousands upon thousands, of, actually probably hundreds of thousands in revenue they must have lost Yes. by just not being able to scale, by taking so long to prepare. Yeah, to, to, to be fair, it's the same here where, yeah, uh, you know, like the delivery slots were, were like maxing out and the, the people were being high left and right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and conversely, if you look at doctors and hospitals, yes. how much they've saved in terms of manpower and resources by permitting people to finally have what in the US they call it teledoc. Yes. Uh, where it's nothing more than just simply doing video conferencing. And, yes. And, you know, before you'd have to, if I wanted to go see a doctor, it would take me an hour in traffic to drive yes. to the doctor. I would get there and then what do they ask you to do? Wait in the lobby for a half hour. Yes. Then I go in for a simple blood test. I'm out in 10 minutes. Now it's going to take an hour to get home in traffic, but we may as well stop at the grocery store. That's going to take another hour to get the groceries. Then you come home. Well, I may as well get gas on the way home. Now suddenly, you know, it's it's an entire day. Yes. Now I can do everything from home. I have more time available to do the work that's idiosyncratic to me, that's more yes. valuable uh, of of me yes. than before. So in many ways, we can all be much more productive now. Yeah, than yeah. Because for instance, like for me as well, you know, like you know, you lose your commute, and to be fair, yeah. it's the same here. Uh, you know, now, now we have uh, uh, video appointments. Yes, um, absolutely. Well, before you know, it, it was like the, the, there were some private health organizations that were doing it, but that was like uh, a um, you know uh, anomaly, if you will. Um, and now everybody's doing it, and yeah, it, it must save them a ton of time as well. Oh my God, I started doing it like um, at least five years ago because I remember I would go to meet potential clients in their offices, or I would go and rent a conference room to go meet with clients to review contracts. Again, it takes you an hour with traffic. You get there, you pay in a pocket for the room just to have a conversation to, to find out if they're actually committed to growing a business or not. Now my process is much, much more streamlined. Uh, but we, we, you know, we screen, we onboard, then we have a video conference call. And, and everything can be done much more efficiently that way. And actually, you can get more done in less time, much more expeditiously. The only things I really miss, to be quite honest with you, are uh, some face-to-face -face interactions with people and being in nature. Because I'm an animal lover. I love nature. And where I live in the U.S., most people will not wear masks. Yes. And they will not socially distance. They just refuse to do it or they don't understand the concept. So it makes it very difficult for me. If I want to go for a walk in a park, I have to put on an N95, make sure that I stay as far away from other people as humanly possible. And in a lot of these places, it's very difficult to do because yes. you have boardwalks where people, you know, pass you within inches. Yes. So if, if they're not wearing a mask, I have to think, well, is this really worth 
you know, potentially getting this and becoming very ill, yes. getting giving this to my wife. Is this really worth it? So I wait until like midnight to go for walks now. Yes. Yeah. Which I is the most that. unfortunate, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So I was wondering as well. So how can business better market themselves using both modern digital marketing and more traditional marketing? Absolutely. And, and sorry to go off on that previous tangent. Uh, basically, here's the thing is that digital marketing in traditional marketing, what I call boots on the ground marketing, because I grew up around military bases and I learned a lot from being around military personnel about organization and commitment to objectives. Uh, and I applied a great deal of that as well to what I learned from working for marketing agencies. Digital marketing and traditional marketing are not really separate, although they appear to be. So most business owners, when they think of marketing, they still think of putting an ad in a newspaper, spending tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, to put an ad on a billboard or the side of a bus. When you can spend a quarter of that to be much more uh, precise and much more targeted in your advertising and in your marketing to really zero in or, to, or, or, or target, I should, I should say, your specific ideal type of customer or client so that there's much less waste. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that digital marketing and traditional marketing are not separate. They really go hand in glove and work together. So when I onboard a client, for example, digital marketing is my specialty, but it's with that caveat that there's got to be, if you really want to grow exponentially rapidly, we've got to also employ traditional marketing as well. You can't cut off your nose to spite your face, so to speak. You've got to use all uh, avenues uh, that are available to you. Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. Um, you know, like, uh, so, I mean, I'll give you a great example. I was online earlier, and I'm a mentor uh, for, for some nonprofits online as well. And someone was asking me, you know, about promoting a, a beauty supply store. And I said, well, first of all, you've got to have the best company website that you can. You're either going to promote what you sell locally or you're going to promote it nationally. Almost all small businesses start and grow locally first, then grow from that foundational base. So my advice was to make sure that your company website is the best that it can be, that it looks modern, is responsive, meaning it works on every type of device the same way and is tested, that uh, the e-commerce functions as easily for visitors as humanly possible. You know, that you're blogging regularly, you're doing appealing uh, video commercials, you're doing everything you can within your power to give consumers uh, content to digest, if that makes sense. I mean, that's why they call them consumers, because you want to give them content to consume videos, podcasts, uh, blog posts that are written in a fun, engaging manner. And and I, I totally understand that it's difficult to do. And you don't always feel like doing it. And if you're a business owner, you really shouldn't be doing it. Because you have your own business to run on top of uh, family issues. So there's there's so much that goes into it on diff, diff, different levels. And uh, it requires a good deal of deliberate organization in learning about the individual business, what makes them unique, who their ideal market is or should be if they don't know, who their larger competitors are locally and nationally, and tweaking a organized marketing plan to accommodate their needs and how they're different. Yeah, yeah and uh, again, you know, completely makes sense. Um, 
Um, I was wondering as well, you know, uh, we're counting down to the new year. So I was wondering as well, uh, according to your opinion, what should businesses be focusing on with the new year around the corner? Oh, man, it's, I can't answer that question without some emotional weight. I mean, what should small businesses consider in the new year? Forget about the new year. The, the new year is already upon us. OK, it has been for quite some time now. And, uh, you know, that that weight is, is called COVID-19. It's the, the, the collapsing economy. It's a consumer confidence market. Every small business owner should really, really, if they haven't already said, what can we do to better build our business, to better solidify our base, to reduce overhead, to expand into new markets, and to operate as as much as possible online to automate processes, automate procedures, offer uh, more and varied content to their consumers and, and really, really see themselves more as a lean uh, startup type of organization. And I'm sure many people listening have heard of the lean management or the lean startup uh methodology but that approach is just as applicable to the small business as it is to the nonprofit as it is to a church uh for example all organizations can operate like a lean startup it's just a question of a will to do so and um it's, it's really critical at this point in our nation's history in the U.S. and I would imagine in the U.K. as well. I think most governments and most countries' businesses are not doing well. And you know, my heart goes out to them. Um, I, you know, I, I wish I could help more. Yeah, and I think we all like, uh, especially as small business owners, will be like, hey, if you see other small businesses owners struggle, you'd be like, hey, I wish. But I that's what you. I would tell them. The yeah. time for getting serious yeah. is long gone. It is yes, long. Yes. The train is out of the station, as they say. Yes. Uh, make a list of everything that you wish you could do yeah. that has value to you as a business owner that is your ideal world, your ideal scenario, and then decide what are you willing to trade in order to achieve this in terms of time, in terms of, you know, commitment, and know that it can be achieved if you're willing to meet someone halfway who can accomplish that for you. Yes. Yeah, no, no, I think i completely to the point. Um... Um, yeah, the cover train has left the station. Um, yeah, and and you, and you know also so, so many small business owners and entrepreneurs really focus in on do it yourself DIY and yes. really obsess over the tool of the day. I call it the bright shiny object syndrome. Yes. Uh, and that's at the expense of actually accomplishing anything. I mean, I can look on Facebook and respond to questions all day. I'm on Quora and LinkedIn and Facebook, and I do not spend half the time that I used to because there's so much that you can get done if you're focused and organized. Yeah. Do it yourself also, I have to add, doesn't work unless, yeah. do it yourself works if you don't care about the results. Yeah. Yeah, and also so, uh, it's good you bring it up. You know, like for instance, like uh, myself, I was trying to do more on Quora, and then it's like this is like a major time sink. It is. And, it's a time vacuum. And then also, I was like, I'm. There's not even a guarantee that that the people that that are you know uh, the target for my services review no um, will will even see that. So no, that, and then, then yeah. And here's here's a different approach. Yes. And tell me what you think. And you listening out there, you can tell me what you think too. You can go to dms.blue and you can email me through my site, my site and ask me questions too. I'm very active online. You can ask me on Twitter. Uh, just go to Twitter and type in DMS, DMS Blue. You'll find me right away. What if you took the same effort on Quora and said, look, 
I'm going to find the same question that's asked repeatedly and simply direct them to a blog post that I wrote on, that addresses this concern. So a very common question for my own field is how much is a website? I see this every day and it drives me bonkers. So what I tell people is I say, look, you're participating in a process. You're not purchasing a one and done physical item. Yeah. This is an ongoing process that needs fine tuning. As your business grows, you may not see the results that you wanted. Things may break. Your website may be hacked. You may want to write content. Okay. Is that so, need content, SEO? Of course, of course. All of that needs fine tuning and adjusting over time. It's a process. Yes. It's a service. It's not an item. So I say, look, when you ask how much is a website, how much is SEO, how much is e-commerce, you're, you're hurting yourself by thinking that it's a single item. It's a process. So the investment varies from person to person. I don't know where you are in terms of developing or growing your business so the prices are going to vary based on what work is involved yeah. so i answered the same question repeatedly the same way and then i just say if you're interested in learning more here are some helpful blog posts that go into even greater detail then if you decide that you actually want to work with an experienced professional Here's how you can reach me. And if you decide you don't want to work with an experienced professional, then I wish you well. God bless you. Have a pleasant journey. Yeah, but yeah, problems yeah. won't go away by magic. No, you know? no. Uh, and then like a website, you know, like uh, writing blogs and such, uh, all, all part of it. And then if your blog is not SEO optimized, it, it's, it's another thing. Um, it's useless. Yeah. If you do, if you most most business websites have no SEO at all because no. let's get let's be honest they don't know what it is and it's not their fault there's nothing wrong with that but I don't ask a small business owner for SEO advice just as you know I, I don't ask the owner of a pizzeria how to fix my car yeah they no, have they have exactly. area of speciality that they excel in I'm not a mechanic I have no idea how to fix my Toyota I have no yes. clue I can't well, even do an oil change. No, uh, to, to be fair, it's good they have a Toyota. It's probably the, <laughs> the more reliable car. Um, right. Yeah, but this, but this, yeah, this same... it's, yeah it's, it's the same with, with uh, uh, you know, like SEO or something. You know, like I know cybersecurity, but for me, SEO is still almost like a magic box, if you will. Uh, right. That I'm still trying to understand and, and I'm quite technical. <laughs> And, and, and so I could talk own, about it. I could yeah. get into the weeds on that topic too, yeah. if you if you want to. At some point, we can come back and talk on SEO. Yeah. Um, uh, years ago, when I had a, a, a very small agency, it was my wife and I and a handful of freelancers. And I remember once a competitor called me up, and I, I he, he called me out of the blue. And his exact words were, you beautiful, expletive, expletive. I won't use it on your podcast. And I knew who it was right away because he had that very gregarious personality. Yes. And he was a big, rangy person and just a lot of fun. And um, so he asked, well, how, how did you get to be number one in Google? I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you're number one in Google. Did you know? And I said, no, per I, personally, I don't look at it every day. It's too stressful. Yes. I just do what I can to move the needle. And I have confidence that things will change. So he said, oh, yeah, you're number one in Google for WordPress developers in the city of Denver, Colorado. How did you do it? And I said, well, I'll tell you. I simply blogged on a daily basis. I wrote about... Uh, what was happening in the community. Yes. I wrote about workshops that I was uh, conducting locally and submitting invitations to people, appealing to local area groups, offering discounts to attend my workshops and blogging about it day in and day out. And after several weeks of doing that, Google looks at your site and says, wow, this person's very active in this topic, in this demographic. Yes. But if people won't blog and don't know how to do it and don't know how to integrate that into their SEO correctly, it, it's not going to help. Yeah. So 
Yeah. So sorry to go on and on. No, no, no. It's but fine. It's, like SEO is like a as a whole. Uh, SEO is very important. Yes. If no one can find you, how are you going to reach them? Exactly. So that's the problem with Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and all these do-it-yourself templates that small business owners go to like moth to a flame. Yes. They don't understand that you get out what you put in. Yeah. And um, it's the, the, the law of cause and effect. You think you're going to get something of value for no value. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And... Uh, these are generic do-it-yourself templates, and you know, I have nothing against these companies personally, uh, but the business model itself, to me, morally, I just feel like you're promising people something that they cannot achieve if they are not experts, and most of them are, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, so I mean, if you don't know what your SEO should be, you don't know how to implement it. You don't know how to to use it technically. Then it's a, a very minor consequence to you. Yeah. No. And then I get that. Um, um, so I was uh, read about your work with the SBA, the Small Business Administration, as well. So yes. What did you learn from doing that work? I learned I don't like stress. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't like heartache. Um, I I realized more about myself than anything that I like to work with clients who, who want to see outcomes achieved, which at face value sounds silly, but not all business owners want to grow. Not all business owners want more people calling them 24 seven or could handle that. So yeah, I was a, a certified small business mentor. That was the exact technical title for quite a number of years for them off and on through two different cities and two different states. And I, I really wanted to legitimately help struggling small business owners because I truly care. And there's no feeling like taking a struggling small business owner and saying, because of what I did, they're making more money now. They've got more people calling them. I took them from the brink of declaring bankruptcy to reinvesting profits. And it's a very powerful feeling to be able to say that truthfully and feel it and know it in your heart. Now, being able to do that is more challenging because you have to have the business owner say, yes, I want this. I'll let you do your work. I won't attempt to micromanage or or tell you what you should do or what have you. That's the number one challenge. So I would work with all of these business owners, these small business owners and advise them on what they should do. And after off and on about 10 years, I realized I'm just not, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. It's just too depressing for me because you would see all these nonprofit organization who, whose purpose your heart would go out to, but then technically they don't have the 501c3 legal status required to take donations. They're creating a site and they're asking for donations, but legally they can't really accept them yet. They don't have a board of directors and on and on and on. And you would see these patterns over and over again repeatedly. And then the small business owner, I would, uh, you know, offer consultations with them and you get the same questions year in and year out. So after a while, I just kind of started to get a little bit jaded with it. And I just said, I need to take a step back from this and just say, look, for me, the ideal client is someone who is enterprise level, meaning that they have 50 or more employees. They've been in existence for at least five years or more. They've made it through the, the, the dark night of the soul. Is, was it Steinbeck, I think, who used that term maybe? Uh, maybe that was Shakespeare, I think, originally used that term, that they've gone through the Sturm und Drang. You know, they've gone through the hard up in, hardship and ter turmoil of growth, and now they're committed. So they, they can work with you. They want to work with you. They're committed to seeing change. Yeah, no, and again, you know, like that, that's, you know, then it's nice to, it has, you know, value if you put in effort in as well, because you know that yeah. they, and, and they want to improve. 
Yeah, and it's not to say that I won't work with a small business owner, but I will screen them accordingly to make sure that, you know, do you, and I say this on my own website, I want to work with committed business owners and premium service providers. Now, even if you're not a premium service provider, will I still work with you? Sure, but I want you to believe that you are. Will I work with a, a, a business owner who is a small business owner? Sure, but they have to be committed. So yeah. that's why I say that. If they're not committed, how can I work with them? No, of course. You know, will they show up for meetings? Maybe, maybe not. Will they see the value in what I do? Maybe, maybe not. Will they be receptive if I, uh, you know, show them some documentation? Will they review it? Well, I don't know. So that's really what this comes down to. It's not about tools. It's not about technical jargon like SEO. It's about mindset. And that's why you see so many people writing about mindset because that's number one. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. They're too big and too strong. Yes. Yeah, no, no, that's, 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 that's so good. Um, I was wondering as well, so what do you feel governments around the world could do better to help small businesses grow? I would love it if, if all governments, and of course, it's, I wish it would happen, but they need to have more organizations that I would say would be similar to... I, and I don't really want to knock one one nonprofit, but I would say I would wish that more governments would have organizations to work specifically with small business owners, but do so in a very direct manner that is more focused on helping business owners generate profits quickly that... Um, takes the restraints off of the consultants. So, for example, if someone such as myself wants to help nonprofits or any business owner for that matter, if we want to charge for our services, we can do so. Many won't permit you to do that, uh, which is ridiculous if you think about it logically. Um, I, I wish he's, the governments would do more to reach out to struggling business owners, not to offer loans with high interest rates, but direct one-on-one -on -one consulting, one-on-one -on -one help, uh, and let, let them do it through video, don't attempt to micromanage them, and let them help struggling small business owners now, because now is the time, not tomorrow. Not 10 years from now, not, you know, after you've retired or made sure your own pension is paid up or what have you. Yeah, again, I was going to say, um, um, yeah, especially now, um, this is where, you know, the, the, the government yes. has to reach out. Um, because The need could not be more pronounced. Because, right because it's one of those things where... It's, it's not just a question of, of potential businesses going under, but but like you mentioned before, it, it, it's 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 people lo losing their livelihood, um, and then also effectively the government saying like yeah, don't try to start your own business because at 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 the moment at the, of need where um, you actually can't control it, as in like a pandemic uh, will drop you, as in uh, you'll be all by yourself. Charming. Um, as in, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll close the economy and then we'll, we'll only help large businesses. Absolutely. And they're doing it in the U.S. They're doing it in other countries. Yes. So yeah. what could governments do to help struggling business owners? They need help. Yes. Yeah. And then, money, you know, yeah, exactly. And money. Then... Yeah. Loans will help. Yeah. But not with high interest rates. No, it's, no exactly. You, you, and also, riding. you know, like there has to be, you know, the, the even if it's loans, they, then the loans has to be Repay. relative to to the uh, what what the shutdown is. And of um, course, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and they're 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 gilding their own nests. Of course, yeah, it, it's it's I th I think it's actually probably incorrect to expect them not to look out for themselves and their no. own families first. Yes, we have to be the ones to 
put conditions on them and right. and, and and really uh, ask for the help that, that that we need. So I really wish that there was more support for struggling small business owners who need it the most and make up the backbone of any government in any country, whether it's Spain or Italy or the United Kingdom or yeah. or, or where have you, uh, the, the small business owner, the entrepreneur makes up the, the bulk of business in all nations and they yes, need yeah, help. Yeah, that, Throwing exactly. money doesn't necessarily solve the problem. You can throw money at a problem, but if you don't know how to invest it properly, it won't do you any good. No, no, no. And then this is the thing as well, you know, um, you know, like it, it's the small businesses that, that spend within locally, within the country. Yeah. Well, it's a large enterprise that, that, that have the money to basically offshore where yeah. basically is actually costing you money. Um, That's right. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Um, and I think, um, governments looking back when the, you know the, the the of course the committees will come and and such and the mm -hmm. reports will come. I, there will be like little lines in there. It will go like, oh yeah, yeah, we banned the small business and we should yes. have done that. I remember back in the '60s, the great, uh, the late great civil rights leader here in the U.S. Uh, U.S. Malcolm X said in one of his speeches. In one of his speeches, he said that uh, you know that that. African Americans, especially during the very, very tumultuous civil rights era, and one would argue today as well, should patronize black owned businesses over the white owned businesses. And I'm not saying I advocate that one way or the other at this point, but when you shop locally, the money stays in your community. I guess that was my point was what he was saying is that and it's actually in his speech. He says that at the end of the day, that business owner takes their basket of money, their basket of money, uh, uh, literally, and they take it home to them in their neighborhoods and where they live and they don't invest it where you live. It would be naive to expect them to. So, you know, we should support local businesses. We should support local business owners if we can. And then that's where the local business owner has to be willing and able to adapt with changing times. I would order my groceries from local grocery stores if there were any. And if I could order from them online and they would deliver to the door, which none of them will. So I have no choice but to use Amazon or uh, uh, Instacart. Yeah, none, no, of, no, no. none of them locally will. No, I remember no. when the pandemic started, there was a local pub that I read about that said no one's coming to our pub to eat. Well, okay, that's tragic. What are you going to do about it? So they, they started uh, selling uh, food that they could order in bulk quantity as a restaurant. So they started selling the food to regular citizens who could go to the restaurant and pick up you know, 50 pounds of pasta or what have you. But of course, they were still requiring that you come into the restaurant to pick it up, which kind of defeats the whole purpose. They wouldn't offer home delivery. They couldn't accept online payment. So you're not solving the dilemma. You're perpetuating it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it is interesting to bring it up. So one of the things, that, again, large views or small was that, for instance, um, just in the U.S., you know, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, like the large supermarkets, of course, you know, nowadays sell more than just food. Um, so yeah. they would re be considered essential and allowed to stay open. And then the rest of the shops would close. So basically, uh, the, the, the large supermarkets would make extra money because literally the only place you could still get clothing was, was the supermarket. Right. And there's there is yeah. no business owner today, yeah. not a single one. I challenge anyone to to ask me about this there's no business owner today any type of business that could not better market and promote itself using digital marketing going online or coordinating digital marketing with traditional marketing in some way or another there's yes. there's always a way to yes. improve yeah. whether it's the accountant or the lawyer well, I think in the UK, they're solicitors. Yes. Because uh, they solicit, um, quite literally, 
uh, I mean, whatever the profession is, you should be online, you should be taking payments, you should be looking at SEO, you should be thinking about, uh, is this a hobby that I just do for, for shits and giggles, as they say, or is this something that you take very seriously and you're committed to and you're willing to invest? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's now is the to... time to get real. Exactly. Um, so I was wondering as well, if a budding entrepreneur would ask you for one piece of advice, what would it be? Decide. That's what I would say. I would say decide which side you're on and be honest with yourself. There's no harm in having a hobby. I have plenty of hobbies. I, you know, I still enjoy video games and, and watching movies. It's a hobby. I never say it's a business because it cannot generate income. I have no interest in it generating income. So I would uh, say aspiring business owners and entrepreneurs to be honest with themselves. Is this a hobby that you do for fun or is this meant to be a, a business that could potentially support a family? And don't say that it is and don't say that this is your goal unless you're willing to fully commit 100% and be willing to trade your comfort. Um, and, you know, are you willing to trade your comfort and peace of mind in order to achieve what your goal is? It's kind of a Buddhist concept of cause and effect. But in order to achieve uh, the specific objective that you want, and the more clearly defined it is, the greater the likelihood of you achieving it. So you shouldn't be afraid of being clear on this. The more clearly defined the objective, the greater the likelihood of achieving it. But you've also got to be willing to trade your comfort. Yes, yes, yes. In so, order yeah, to yeah. achieve this, because uh, when I was able to support my wife with my agency, I didn't play video games. Let's be honest. I didn't read. I didn't have time to to reread the classics. Yes. It was about hustling and having workshops and boot camps and bringing in new clients on a, on a regular day basis and emailing and calling agencies and asking for work and changing my SEO and blogging with the very specific goal yes. of attracting eyes. And now, thank God, knock on wood, I don't have to do that. I can be a podcast guest. Yes. Um, yes, I did, yeah. Uh, and, and and to be fair, you know, podcasting as well, uh, and even guesting uh, is a form of marketing. As well. Exactly. I'm still marketing, but exactly. I'm taking a more indirect approach. I can exactly. be a guest on podcasts, which I enjoy very, I enjoy very much. Yeah. Uh, but is it as productive as teaching a boot camp or workshop online or in person, which is what I did back then, of course. Yeah the answer would probably be no. no. So you really got to look at what you say you want to do and be honest with yourself and be as authentic and as real with yourself. Exactly. As you, yeah, you, you need to look it's at hard. What, what, what your most effective activity is and then focus on that. And, uh, and you have to be willing to put in the work now so you don't have to put in the work later. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. And I always tell business owners, look, if you're willing to meet me halfway across the street, I'll meet you there. Yes. But you but if if you're not willing to commit and then if you tell me, oh well my budget is a hundred dollars or something, which I guess in the UK would be a hundred uh, uh is it euros or pounds? I uh, pounds, pounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Pardon me, UK listeners, please no, excuse that's fine, me. That's fine. Uh but you know, unless you have realistic expectations and you've conducted some at least some basic research, don't expect the needle to move. So you've got to be willing to, to put forth the, the, the good faith effort, so to speak. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I always offer free consultations for people, but, you know, I screen them accordingly before that yes. and during that. And then just say, you know, okay, here's my input and, and I can or can't help you, but you, you've got to make it so that you can get there. Yeah, exactly. So then, yeah, but yeah, to, to, to finish, uh, last question I had um, on a slightly more personal, if you will. Um, if you had sure. a magic wand, what would you want to make happen? Oh, boy. Um... 
Well, I would have to say I would want world peace because I think, I, I do think that it would help business. I of course. Do think yeah. it, I, yeah. But I also think it would help people individually be able to give of themselves more freely. And I think it would empower business owners to to be more able to think in global terms and not see themselves as members of individual tribes or, you know, here in the U.S. we have Republicans versus Democrats. One group is we're very fiscally conservative. Um, we favor millionaires over working class people. Uh, we're, we're not really in, you know, in favor of social reform measures and things of that nature. And then you have the other group that is in favor of that. Um, you know, I know in the UK, I know about the Tories, I think, and Labour and so on. But I think you have more parties than they do in the US. But it's yeah. created a very tribal, very toxic yeah. stew, if you will. Yeah, yeah. This is the funny how you bring it up. Like, so yeah, basically UK, in a way... It's got like a two-party system, as in there's other parties. And at one point, the UK had a coalition government with mm. liberal Democrats. Um, so the Tories are are basically almost like a left-wing version, I would almost say. Yeah. <laughs> of, of, the, yeah. Of, the, of the of the of the Republicans. So compared to, think... to 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 you know, uh, um, but the funny part, and this is the background. So originally coming from the Netherlands, I'm used to coalition governments. Mm. Um, and 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 why I prefer that is that you give people that are more marginalized they can mm -hmm. have their own party they can have right. representation and, and they're uh, gonna make they money to... they're no, gonna no, no. make money for the government they're gonna pay taxes so it's in everyone's best interest to yeah it them. was more like a, it's it's a, rep a representation thing so yeah. basically uh yes uh, you know that that particular party for instance might only have two seats in the government but at least you represent it so you don't feel disenfranchised yes. and you know the funny thing is if you look at this from a business perspective yeah. as well as from a moral perspective when you do what's right yeah. just what you know morally is the correct thing to do everybody benefits the economy is better off for it. Yes. Individuals are better off for it. People are happier. They live longer. They can be more productive for it. So it's in everyone's favor to really uh, do what's right instead yes. of robbing Peter to pay Paul or, yes. or, or gilding your own nest or what have you, where people uh, have short-term perspectives. And I, I mean, I think so much of the, the decisions that governments make and that individuals make when they vote uh, for these leaders are based on fear. Yes. Not on. Um, it's it's fear specifically, you know, like in, in, in two party countries. Fear of the other. Uh, fear know, of, the, fear of the other side. <laughs> fear of the other, the scary yeah. other, yes. or fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it from a spiritual perspective and just say, look, scientifically, we know the universe is always expanding. Yes. Now, therefore, opportunity must be expanding. Yeah. If you look at it from that perspective and just say, look, let's give the small business owners what they need without all these strings in, attached to it. Let's not be afraid of people who don't look like us yeah. um, or don't sound like we do, because if they contribute equally, we'll all be better off. Yes. Let's just do what we know is right and you know vote for whoever is in favor of expansion you know not what they say but what they actually do yes vote for who's who's you know people ask me well who do i vote for i i, I vote for whoever i believe is going to help the the working man yes. the working man and woman who will help the the independent bookstore owner who will help the business owner and um you know, if that makes me liberal, so be it. I don't care. It's about helping the business owner because in so doing, you help everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, like if you empower the small business, then those are the people that, that can help the community. Um, Absolutely. That, 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 Microsoft was founded in a garage. Yeah. yeah. 
Bill Gates quit the company he worked at because they didn't listen to him. Yeah. They were not receptive to ID to his ideas. So he, he asked a, a handful of other programmers, you know, would you guys be interested in working on some projects outside of this company? Don't let them know. So they said, okay, Bill, we'll go with you. And so they started this company in their garage and called it Microsoft. Yeah. Now, now he's doing quite well for himself. Yes. And the same is true for um, Steve Jobs, who, yeah. if you think about it, was nothing more than a marketing expert. Yes. He was a master of marketing. Yes. Let's take computers and make them look really pretty and make them different colors and tell people through our marketing commercials that, that, yeah, that the difference they are unique. If they buy our brands. Yeah, they yeah. buy the yeah. brand. Yeah. They're, they're three times as more expensive as any other type of computer, yeah. if not more so. Yes. But to and be fair, I'm, I'm, a Mac, I'm a Mac person myself, so I'm, you know, I'm reflecting myself. But uh, yeah, oh, I like what works. Marketing. Um, yes. I'm in favor of what works. Yes. That will help me do my job and is more efficient. So that's exactly. how I look at it. Yes. But anyway, I'm sorry to have uh, been so loquacious. No, no, this is fine. Uh, it, it's uh, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, we can talk for hours. I, I, I'm willing to bet. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time. Um, for listeners listening right now, whether you're on a surfboard, on a space rocket going to Mars, um, in the, in the ocean, on the beach, um, wherever you are, um, you know, do let me know. Reach out, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show and I look forward to having you tune in again next episode. See you next time.